Where was she murdered? I told you, Urban Medical Center. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Morton. I'm a little confused. Um, your daughter was killed at the hospital? Yeah, in the emergency room. And I want to swear out a murder complaint against the resident in charge of it. This resident was treating her? No, killing her. But she was at the hospital for treatment. Yeah, a sore throat, muscle aches. She only went in to get a prescription for some antibiotics. Well, sometimes people are a lot sicker than they look. Listen to me. I was a medic in Vietnam. I know who's dying and who isn't. My daughter was not that sick. Somebody in that emergency room did something that killed her. Who does he want to bring charges against? The resident in charge of the emergency room. Oh, come on, Max. People die in hospital emergency rooms every hour of every day now. That may indeed be tragic, but it is not criminal. Unless somebody was criminally negligent. And how the hell would Mr. Morton know if that had happened? He was a medic in Vietnam. He says she wasn't sick enough to die. He was very convincing. I'm not saying no. Just had my first day off in two weeks. There is a world out there. You're the intern who treated a young girl named uh, Suzanne Morton. Uh, yeah, she's the last patient I admitted before I took off. Bronchitis. Uh, she dramatized her symptoms a bit, so uh, I ordered a chest x-ray, put her aside to wait for a bed. Why? Right now, we're doing a routine investigation of her death. Death? Why, she died? You sound surprised. Don't people croak here every day? Well, she wasn't that sick. I mean, you don't die from bronchitis. Suzanne Morton, she had pneumonia. The sputum examination and blood culture were indicative. We discussed it during rounds. Pneumonia, huh? A lot of people die of that these days? When it's complicated by chemical pneumonitis, sometimes. The patient was feverish and fell unconscious. She must have aspirated some of the contents of her stomach. Stomach acid and lungs do not mix well. This can happen fast? Yes, it can. Excuse me. Oh. Busy woman. Yeah. So busy she can't even make eye contact. Suzanne Morton. Yes, uh, if you see Mr. Morton, please extend my condolences. Dr. Raza, were you on rounds when they reached her? Yes, yes, that is right. I came right away. Why? I didn't think she was that sick. We heard bronchitis, maybe pneumonia. No, 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 no. She was very sick. Uh, she should have been in the intensive care unit. Unfortunately, there were no beds. You know, in my country, we accept death, but here, you're expected to live forever. Nurse Michaels, please call operator. You ever hold a human heart in your hands? Nurse Michaels, Only mine. What year are you in? Third. We go hands on. Did you ever lay your hands on Suzanne Morton? The pneumonia, yeah. I, I spent 40 minutes trying to find an orderly to take her to intensive care. On the way back, I passed a gunshot wound through the neck with a six-inch exit. You ever see one of those? Yeah, well, they're not so exciting when you run into one in a crack house. Financial advisor needed in ER. Tell me some more. And this guy in the emergency room. Must have been his daughter was sick. He's going nuts yelling, why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? It sounded like he knew his way around. Around the hospital? around sick people. Those doctors, something wasn't right, the way they looked. Worried, excited? Embarrassed. Embarrassed. Does this make sense to you, Max? Sure, she had bronchitis, she had pneumonia. She was fine when she got here, she was dying when she got here. Godlike pronouncements sound like normal medical procedure to me. So, Max, what's your problem? Meaning? Meaning your attitude. 82. My partner and I go into this flea bag SRO, pick up some junky bank robber. I'm putting the cuffs on him. His girlfriend comes from out of nowhere, jumps me. We're rolling around, I hit my head against the radiator. Well, you know, hurt like hell, but it's no big deal. A week later, 
I start slurring words. I go see a neurologist, quote, top guy in Manhattan. He looks at me. He says, I want you in the hospital. I'm going to do a CAT scan. Yeah, well, I would definitely freak. Next day, Dr. God comes in, says, uh, you have an inoperable brain tumor in your cerebellum. He said it like he was telling me they'd uh, be serving chicken for dinner. We decide to get a second opinion. I go see another top neurologist. He does another CAT scan. He comes in and says, you don't have a brain tumor in your cerebellum. You have a subdural hematoma here. And a month later, I was fine. Hey, at least he caught the mistake, all right? <sighs> yeah. And when they don't, they just bury them. Dr. Austin will see you now. Let's go see the chief of medicine. I'm sure he'll be godlike, too. A diagnostician is like a detective. As a matter of fact, Conan Doyle modeled Sherlock Holmes on Dr. Joseph Bell. You solve every case you work on? We can tell a felony from a traffic ticket. Look, a patient walks in with a headache. She have a subarachnoid hemorrhage, a berry aneurysm, a retroorbital tumor, or does she just have a headache? Do you give her an aspirin, or do you saw open her skull? You make the speech at funerals? I saw that girl in the emergency room on rounds. She was in the hands of competent staff. The girl is dead. Yeah, well, people like to believe that medicine is pure science. Medicine is a science. But doctors know it's also a lottery. See what I mean? The guy's chief of medicine. And all he can come up with is, it's a lottery. 